but it's still got oil and rock at least three or four. Um, so Philip Mannheim, he's a guy from uh, Connecticut, and for a long time he's been advocating thinking about something called wild gravity. So he replaced the einstein hilbert action with wild temperature squared. And for various reasons, he's very excited about this as a you know, way of explaining a lot of the problems of the universe, like dark energy and dark matter and so forth. And if you're interested, I encourage you to go look at his work. But of course, when you do that, you're now going to have higher time derivatives in your action. And he introduced this whole host of problems that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk about non-unitarity and ghosts and unbounded spectrum and so forth. And so he got together with Carl Bender, and they started thinking about simpler examples of theories with higher time derivatives. For example, this box squared phi theory that has been a, a big character in today's talk. And they argue that, well, because of GT symmetric quantum mechanics, you can really make sense of these things. And now you should go back and think, take conformal gravity more seriously. There's another fellow, Smilka, Andre Smilka, who comes to this slightly differently. He's been thinking about higher derivative corrections to gravity, I think mostly in the context of like brain worlds and mental tundras. And uh, his take on was, well, you know, the big theory may be sick, but really we should study interactions and let's just look classically at simulating these theories with small interactions. And he says, well, you know, if you look at this numerically, you can find these regions of stability where even though the free theory may look sick, you have stable behavior for you know, box squared phi plus phi to the four, if lambda is not too big. And he gets into fights with Mannheim and Bender about their approach, but that's another story. And then there's Frost and Hinterbickler, uh, who were interested in TSCFT uh, correspondence. Uh, and they point out that you know, most examples of distributed conformal field theory correspondence involve non-unitary conformal field theories. And so they took a step back and they said, well, if that's true, if we really want to understand TSCFT, we should understand non-unitary, simple non-unitary field theories first. And so they have a, a, several long papers where they look at these higher derivative theories in more detail. And then finally, after we wrote this paper, we found out, uh, I think Bobby Acharya had mentioned this, but the Boyle and Tarak were also looking at this box squared phi theory. And they have this amusing uh, numerolo numerological, I guess, observation that if you add one of these box squared phi theories uh, to the standard model, it's a way of somehow solving the cosmological constant problem uh, and, and getting rid of inflation. You have a model of you know, the universe where you have the standard model plus box squared phi, where you don't need inflation, and you know, all of your hard problems in cosmology are solved. Except in statics. The sitter already fixed the thing. So, what, what, what Reading through this long list, one thing that sort of occurred to me is that when I, when I look at these papers, most of them punt on the, on the problem of boundary conditions. They, they have some line close to the you know, first few paragraphs of the introduction or in the discussion where they say, it would be nice to think about boundary conditions in higher derivative theories. So here we've thought about it for them. <laughs> and I'm hoping that maybe some of them will go back and actually use what we've done. Uh, and it will be useful, but I don't know. It, and I'm inspired by this by Maldesena's paper from 2011, where he was also kind of interested in conformal gravity. This is the gravity where you replace Einstein Hilbert with wild squared. And it supports different kinds of black hole solutions, it supports the ones you're used to, and then it supports the ones that look a bit funny. And he points out that you know if you set up your boundary conditions right, you can get rid of all the funny solutions, and you can keep the, the nice black hole solutions. And I'm wondering if something similar or more general can be sort of extracted from 